Praise be to Jesus. Hi again, everyone. Uh, okay, so let's continue here. So we're up to uh, April 24th, 2014. An Argentine woman, uh, Jack Qui Lisbona, wrote Pope Francis expressing her concern about not being able to receive communion due to being civilly remarried following a divorce. Pope Francis then called her, told her that the subject was under study at the Vatican and that it was okay for her to receive communion, saying, quote, a little bread and wine does not harm, unquote. <sighs> the Holy See Press Office issued this statement. Several telephone calls have taken place in the context of Pope Francis's personal pastoral relationships. Since they do not in any way form part of the Pope's public activities, no information is to be expected from the Holy See Press Office. That which has been communicated in relation to this matter outside the scope of personal relationships and the consequence consequent in relation to this matter outside the scope oh and the consequent media amplification cannot be confirmed as reliable and is a source of misunderstanding and confusion. Therefore, consequences relating to the teaching of the church are not to be inferred from these occurrences. Now, you know what's the matter with this? See, if it wasn't reported by the National Catholic Register or by, you know, in the media at all, it would just go away. You see, now, now that it's uh, out in the media, or it was, you know, in April of 2014, uh, when it gets out in the media like that, people read it, they see it, and they say, oh, look, he said a little bread and wine does no harm. You see, you know, it's really not helpful uh, for them to do that. Uh, just, you know, take a lesson here from the Pope himself. If you want something to go away, just keep your mouth shut. All right, that's the quickest way to get something to go away. All right, let's move on. April 28th, Pope Francis tweets, quote, inequality is the root of social evil, <laughs> unquote. All right, May the 9th, 2014, Pope Francis calls on governments for, uh, quote, legitimate re redistribution of wealth to the poor. And that's from the Huffington Post. May the 12th, 2014, Pope Francis quotes Hillary Clinton saying, quote, it takes a village to raise a child, <laughs> unquote. It's from the Zenith News Agency. Um, May 13th, Pope Francis says he would baptize aliens, saying, quote, <laughs> baptize aliens, quote, who are we to close doors? Uh, how strange. All right, May the 15th. Pope Francis said, quote, Jesus Christ did not fall from heaven like a hero that comes to save us. No, Jesus Christ has a history, unquote. <laughs> okay. you, know, you, could, you could talk a long time about each one of these. You know. All right, May 24th. Pope Francis visits Bethlehem's Church of the Nativity. Days later, a fire breaks out at the scene. <laughs> All right, May 25th. Pope Francis arrives in Jordan. Before his arrival, those waiting at the airport in Amman felt a magnitude 4.1 earthquake that struck in Israel near its border with Jordan. Associated Press. May 25th. Pope Francis offers prayers at Israeli separation wall. Stop Rouse's controversy as pontiff invites Perez and Abbas to Rome in unprecedented papal intervention in the peace process. May 27th, Pope Francis says, since it is not dogma, this is a quote now, since it is not dogma, 
the door is always open to rethink priestly celibacy, unquote, NBC News. Well, you see, and here it's five years later, and they'll probably do that this fall at the Amazonian Synod. All right, June the 5th. Pope meets with televangelist Joel Olstein at the Vatican. <laughs> June the 8th. First ever Muslim Jewish prayer at the Vatican. June the 13th. Interview with Spanish, uh, Spanish language magazine La, La Vanguardia on fundamentalism. Now, this one here is a long one here. All right. Pope Francis said, quote, Violence in the name of God does not correspond with our time. It's something ancient. With historical perspective, one has to say that Christians at times have practiced it. When I think of the Thirty Years' War, there was violence in the name of God. Today, it is imagina un unimaginable, right? We arrive sometimes by way of religion to very serious, very grave contradictions. Fundamentalism, for example. The three religions we have are fundamentalist groups, small in relation to all the rest. A fundamentalist group, although it may not kill anyone, although it may not strike anymore, is violent. The mental structure of fundamentalists is violence in the name of God. Wow, isn't that something? So we fundamentalists are violent in the name of God. All right. All right, well, there's a... All right, on globalization... Pope Francis said, quote, Well understood, globalization is a wealth. Poorly understood, globalization is that which nullifies differences. <laughs> it is like a sphere, uh, a sphere in which all points are equally distant from the center. Yeah, I'm not going to read any more of this here. Then he makes a comment about Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict made a uh, you know, it's just more twisting around. All right. Uh, June 23rd, Pope excommunicates Italian mafia members. That's from CNN. June 24th, Pope meets with televangelist Kenneth Copeland and other evangelicals at the Vatican. June 29th, Pope says, Communists are closeted Christians. Oh, boy, is that a dangerous statement? Uh, I gotta check the time here. Uh, coming up on eight minutes. Communists are closeted Christians. Boy, that's the furthest thing from the truth. June 29th, Pope Francis, when asked about uh, misconomy and women in the church, I didn't pronounce that right, I don't know what it means, and women in the church said, uh, quote, the fact is that women were taken from a rib he laughed strongly. I'm kidding. That's a joke. I agree that the question of women must be explored more deeply. Otherwise, one cannot understand the church herself. All right. July the 7th. Marie Kane, a survivor of clerical sexual abuse, spoke of her meeting with Pope Francis, saying, quote, I'll never get my faith back. I don't think I'll ever go back to the church. And actually, the Pope, I said that to him. And he said, quote, You know you don't need, you don't need, you don't need to be in the church. You are part of the church. You don't physically need to be in it. Inside it, you know, oh, inside it, you know, to be part of God's family, like, He's telling her she doesn't need to be in, be in the church. I mean, physically in the church. Oh, boy. All right, here, July 9th, here. Let me, I gotta check the time again. All right, we got time for a couple more. At a private lunch, Pope Francis told Brian Stiller of World Evangelical Alliance, quote, I'm not interested in converting evangelicals to Catholicism. 
I want people to find Jesus in their own community. There are so many doctrines who will, oh, so many doctrines we will never agree on. Let's not spend our time on those. Rather, let's be about showing the love of Jesus. All right, July 12th. At the conclusion of the international seminar on the Pope's proposal, quote, towards a more inclusive economy, unquote, Pope Francis said, quote, I thank you for, for the help that you give with your work, with your reflection, to restore this unbalanced situation and to recover man and bring him back to the center of reflection and the center of life. He is the king of the universe. Wow, man is the king of the universe. And this is not theology. It is not philosophy. It is human reality. With this, we will go forward as man, as the king of the universe. Well, that's a good place to start. That one there is pretty amazing. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.